there welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video about a month ago I published a bit of a rant about the pilot metropolitan called pilot Metro WTF I tried to understand why such a flawed fountain pen design was so incredibly popular and constantly recommended as a starter fountain pen sure recommend it if you want to put someone off writing with a fountain pen but today I don't want to talk about the Metro, I want to talk about another extremely popular entry-level fountain pen, the Lamy Safari. When I published my rant about the Metro, I got a lot of requests for a similar rant about the Lamy Safari. I was reluctant to do that because I don't have the same kind of animosity towards the Safari as I do against the Metro. I'm not personally partial to the Safari, but that's a personal choice, not a criticism of its design or manufacture. I'm mad at Pilot because they design and build brilliant fountain pens and refuse to do anything to address the obvious flaws of the Metro because it's a cash cow for them. There's no need to be mad at Lamy for the design of the Lamy Safari because it's an extremely well thought out, precisely engineered fountain pen directed at a specific market. So there's nothing to apologize for here. In fact, even though I've titled this video Lamy Safari WTF, I'm going to spend most of it discussing why the Lamy Safari is justifiably popular and an excellent fountain pen. And if you're wondering what the acronym WTF stands for here, it's why the fuss? So let's get into it right now. <laughs> I've already done a review of this Lamy Safari, which you can see by clicking right up here if you wish. So I'm not going to go over the details of this fountain pen at this time. For those of you expecting a rant similar to my rant about the Pilot Metropolitan, well, you're going to be disappointed. Whereas those of you Lamy Safari lovers out there might just be a little bit pleased. In the end, it all comes down to personal choice and personal taste, of course. I tried to make a point of distinguishing between personal taste and bad design with the Metro, and I'll try to do that again here with the Safari. So I'm going to cover all of the good things about the Safari, and then look at what I consider to be the bad things about it. I have a large list of good points about this fountain pen, and a comparatively small list of complaints. So let's start with the good points. One, the Lamy Safari is inexpensive, relatively. For $30 US, this is a damned fine fountain pen, or a damned medium, or a damned broad. It's your damn choice. Oh, damn, damn, damn. I'm sorry. Oh, damn, damn, and blasted. I'm sorry. Shh, don't you shh me. And two, it's well engineered. Yes, there are examples of less expensive fountain pens out there, but none of them can surpass the precise German engineering of the Lamy Safari. And three, there's a large selection of easily swapped nibs. There are lots and lots of nib options from extra fine to stubs and the steel are uniformly excellent right out of the box a high percentage of the time. In fact, I was never really fond of the fine nib on this Safari that was given to me by a viewer a couple of years ago, the pen I mean. Yeah, but in preparation for this video, I decided to get a different nib for it. So I ordered this Lamy 1.1 stub nib designed for the Lamy Joy, which is basically a long-tailed version of the Safari and part of the Lamy Joy calligraphy set. I got this nib on Amazon and it was delivered the next day. So let's swap it. This is how easy nib swapping is on the Lamy Safari. Just put a piece of scotch tape on the nib, just like that. This might be a little bit inky because it's inked up but then just pull straight out and the nib should come right off just like that then you take your new nib you line it up with the rails and push it on it's just that quick and easy folks I don't know of another fountain pen nib swap that is this easy as these Lamy style nibs are quick and easy what was that two seconds two seconds I'm just gonna stand that up in my little ink well there uh, to let the ink run down into that nib and then we'll talk about number four the Lamy Safari posts beautifully deeply securely and because that cap is so light it doesn't back weight that pen at all it becomes a little bit long but this is supremely writable 
uh, with this pen post event. So you posters out there will love the fact that the Lamy Safari posts gorgeously. And unposted, it's plenty long enough and very, very comfortable and very, very light in the hand. And while we're talking about it in the hand, let's talk about number five, the great balance of the Safari. It's well balanced and ergonomic in the hand, both unposted and posted. And six, selection. The Safari comes in tons and tons of colors and finish options with new colors and finishes appearing every season. If you're a collector, this is awesome. It's something to look forward to with anticipation each season. People enjoy matching their Safari colors with their stationery, their journals, clothing, nails, and even eye makeup. I do think this shit brindle brown Safari complements my eyes. And seven, the Safari comes with a great converter. Now I don't have a converter actually for my Safari. This has a cartridge in it, but my Lamy Studio has a similar converter to it. It's a large bore on it. The Safari has little nubs on here on the sides and has a red tail. But this is a terrific, well-built, well-designed converter that uh, really allows for ink flow with that large bore. Never had any issues with Lamy converters. And eight, the built-in ink window is a great feature and rare for a cartridge or a cartridge converter fountain pen design. It allows you at a glance to see how much ink you have, whether the pen is capped or uncapped. And nine, the pen is light and durable. Your hand won't get tired easily after long writing sessions, and you can throw it in a bag, a briefcase, tuck it into your portfolio, toss it in a drawer with little worry about finish damage. It's a true knockabout pen, and you rarely hear about Lamy Safari's cracking. And 10, the Lamy Safari has a great clip. I think everybody talks about how fantastic, how well designed this clip is. It clips to anything and everything, no matter how thin or thick, and it always springs back. So that's 10 good points about the Safari. I bet Safari lovers can come up with a lot more. Let me know. But let's also look at the bad points, and I have two of them. Either of these points makes the Safari a non-starter for me personally. Both of them together just reinforce why I don't collect them or write with one. Bad point number one, the tripod grip. This is it, folks, right here. It doesn't matter that the tripod grip actually fits my particular style of grip. It does. Just the fact that the pen forces my hand to grip it a certain way makes the Safari a pen I can't use. I know there are plenty of people out there that don't have conventional, or what I like to call correct, fountain pen grips. There are a number of thumb overs and death grips and uh, all kinds of ways to incorrectly hold the pen. That doesn't mean that Lamy has a right to force people to write correctly any more than we are allowed to tell people how to crack their eggs. After this accident, the Emperor published an edict commanding all his subjects in future to break the smaller end. 11,000 men are known to have died in the last uprising, but they'd rather die than crack the smaller end of the egg. A safari might be considered training wheels for the first time fountain pen writer, but eventually you have to get rid of the training wheels and drive your pen on your own without any help from Lamy. And the second reason I don't personally like safaris is the aesthetics. I just don't like the blocky, chunky, minimalist, Bauhaus, austere aesthetic, say that 10 times fast, of the Safari. And everything I just said about the Safari, good and bad, goes equally for the All-Star. It's just an aluminum version of the Safari. I just don't like it. And as always, your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. So let's try out this 1.1 stub nib before we go. And here is the Lamy Safari with a 1.1 stub nib. Lamy Safari, 1.1 steel stub nib. And the ink today is all matchy-matchy with the Shit Brindle Brown Safari. It's Mont Blanc's version of Shit Brindle Brown called Toffee Brown. For all you toffee nosers out there, you Brits know what I'm talking about. Let's check the wetness. It's a fairly dry nib, but again, it's a stub. It doesn't have any tipping material. 
and you can give it a little bit, a little bit of push like that to make it a little bit wetter if you wish a little bit wetter but again you get a thin horizontal and a thick vertical and you get lots of great line variation with very little effort which is right up my street I tell you don't make me work uh, with my writing my writing is already bad enough I don't need to have to work at it and there's a good amount of feedback on this nib which is to be expected because it is a stub and I believe these Lamy stub nibs come in 1.1 1.5 and 1.9 millimeter width uh, you can get them in a set called the Lamy Joy calligraphy set uh, here's one on Amazon for $68 Canadian which I think at the moment is about a buck and a quarter US yeah about that and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and please look in the description for a link to gold spot pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store and when you shop at gold spot using my link you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you you can also join as a member of my channel for 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section you might not like my comments but there you go and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching my rant and that's all she wrote Yay, safari. I made this.